Hello, everyone. I hope that you hear and see me okay. Um, so my name is Jasmine Verdi, and I will be your moderator for this session um, for Patricia's talk, Coca Leaf in Bolivia, Challenges and Perspectives on the International Market in the Times of COVID-19. So um, before, before I dive into the content of the talk, um, I'll just give you a little brief introduction about myself. Um, so I, I work as a freelance writer. I do writing for Jakuna, Psychedelics Today, Lucid News, and Cosmic Sister, among others. I also work for a publishing company. We're an indie publisher based in Santa Fe, New Mexico, although I myself am based in, in Mexico. Um, in San Miguel de Allende. If anyone's in Mexico, please feel free to write me. I'd love to connect. Um, yeah, so the press, we are actually working on co-publishing a Chacruna anthology, which will come out in August, um, called Psychedelic Justice on the themes of um, racial equity, gender diversity, uh, reciprocity, um, and safeguarding indigenous wisdom. So. I, I recommend that if you're interested, you can go to the Synergetic Press booth and check the book out. We have a 20% discount for Chakuna members at the moment or Chakuna audiences. So um, it's a good place to get that. Um, yeah, so a little bit about Patricia. So she is from Bolivia. She is a social communicator, columnist, cultural manager, and artist certified by the Ministry of Culture. She is also the founder of um, a youth organization or a youth initiative called Fundación Semilla or no, sorry, Fundación Acción Semilla or Seed Action, um, which is it's meant to kind of connect young people um, and work to educate um, and inspire research on drug policy and human rights more generally. Um, and so in her talk today, she will be sharing with us um, about the coca trade in Bolivia and how it has been affected by COVID-19. Um, personally, I'm really excited to hear this talk because it's a subject I know very little on. Um, so without further ado, um, I introduce Pat Patricia. But, um, oh, I also wanted to let you know that there is a slight delay in um, her audio. So um, yeah, if you could just bear with us and we will see how we, we go, but it should work fine. So um, yeah, when you're ready, Patricia, you can join. But in the time being, I, okay, she's not in the room yet. Okay. But in the time being, I'd love to hear from everyone that is present, where everyone is calling from. And, you know, it's Sunday, the, the last day of the conference. Oh, here she is. Okay. Wonderful. Um, but yeah, I hope that you have been having a beautiful conference so far. Um, I'd be curious to hear from you all like what, what has been one of the more inspiring or insightful aspects for you. Oh, hi from Hawaii. Wow. Bristol, Vermont. Oh, wonderful. Someone else from Bolivia. Beautiful. Austin, Texas. Okay. So Deva, is Patricia able to join yet? Okay, she might be having technical technical difficulties, but um, yeah, what is what has been one of your favorite talks that you attended today? Oh, here we go. Wonderful. Okay. Welcome, Patricia. Thank you for being with us today. Hello, Jasmine. It's, it's really nice to be here. Uh, the day has come <laughs> and uh, yeah i think we are going to have a really nice talk today forward to it we're ready when you are so just let me know and i'll bring the slides up maybe you want to introduce yourself it's okay 
we can We'll just bring the slides up quickly. So can everyone see, is that good? Cool. Well, uh, today I'm going okay. to talk about Bolivia and some perspectives, some perspectives that we have and the issues uh, that we lived uh, between the coronavirus and the, <laughs> and the cup that we live in Bolivia. So, uh, 2019 and 2020 really, really complicated in my country. And well, I would like to begin uh, from the beginning so we can go to the next slide. Well, when we talk about Bolivia, we have to remember that we are a country that um, live with the a stigmatization of being a coca grower country, right? Like Colombia and Peru. So we were uh, in the middle of a drug war that only brought us pain and and suffering and a lot, a lot of conflict. So we can uh, talk about the 70s to the 90s when the coca growers constituted as an organized uh, union force that was confronting North American policy, right? Uh, based on the prohibition of the coca leaf by an alternative development it happens it happened also in in the other countries like colombia peru and around the globe of course talking about another plant so um this process this uh, current legislation that we have now arise from the social movements basically you know and between those decades uh, all the fighting against militarization of producing areas and against the substitution of coca crops um, with uh, some agricultural projects, in theory more profitable, right? We were, uh, we, we, we can talk about the failure of that, of that policy. So the first step to vindicate the coca leaf uh, are in 1994. You can go please with, uh, with the slides. And then we see that um, the first uh, the first government in Bolivia that wants to go further, one step further with the coca leaf is the Jaime Pazamora government. Um, but it doesn't, uh, well, let's say that it just stays like that. Uh, more initiatives around it, like seriously talking about, uh, seriously talking until to, um that Bolivia another government uh, another way of another way of um making policy when we talk about the uh, coca leaf uh, it also um, gets uh, started let's say with the arrival of Evo Morales right so there are um, several tools uh, that are implemented on the coca leaf uh, project as uh, the community social control that uh, I'm sure you all know this, right? And this is uh, consolidated to allow the reduction of coca crops in the tropical regions of Colombia and Los Yungas in La Paz, right? Um, the, what's interesting about this uh, community social control is that it's based on their own norms, the norms of the of the communities. So that's how uh, we start with this uh, current legislation that we have now. We can see in the next um, slides. Next one. Well, um, all this fat takes us to 906. Um, that is the current legislation that uh, put the limits on and talk about what you can do or what you cannot uh, about coca leaves. So it, it rises up to 2000 to oh, 22,000. 
thousand hectares. Uh, los yungas with a maximum of 14,000 hectares and uh, in Cochabamba and all, in all the, those places they were uh, raising up to 7,700. So it, uh, we can go with the other slide please. We can see that it, um, it was complicated uh, a really complicated decision. Um, it has generated a lot of controversy between those sectors, but uh, it's not my place to talk about the controversies or go deep inside. So, however, the political problems it got completely worse in the government of Añez on 2020, um, not only given the criminalization of the coca leaf, the strong criminalization that the coca growers were living but also uh, because of the pandemic. So the pandemic worsened the situation. And uh, this left the producers and consumers in communities on the verge of the interdiction and prohibition. So there were days that they couldn't even, they couldn't even their coca leaf from one place to another. So they were basically starving as well. We can please. Uh, well, we have also um, yeah, we have uh, this strategy that is uh, developed between 2020 and well, it's still been 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 uh, modifying. I don't know, uh, working with all the institutions that goes around the drug policy issue in Bolivia, but we have this uh, strategy that is very interesting because uh, it talks about a sustainable development strategy with coca. It means that uh, instead of uh, instead of uh, start working with plants that don't really um, are much demanding, uh, we still work with coca leaf in regions where coca leaf uh, cultivation is uh, allowed. So proposes a new methodology and aims to articulate and solve the demands of the sectors. But it is still like <laughs> like every everything in, in public policy has to be has to be done or done and uh, consolidated in a comprehensive system because there's a lot a lot of work that we still have to do for example when we talk about industrialization or maybe basic uh, transformation of the coca leaf uh, when we even talk about commercialization and that that that's a little bit where we want to go with this uh we did topic like talking about coca leaf we talk about uh, not only the the facts that made our history like it is, right, in the vindication of our cultural rights, ancestral rights, but also um, we really would like to explore what we can do beyond that. So please, the next one. Well, uh, Argentina is a country that is next to Bolivia, and they are a, a really big potential for commercial commercial exchange. It has been happening in in, in, in the first uh, century of of nineteen 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 or nineteen eighteen. Um, Argentina was a really big uh, consumer country because of the cultures of the north of Argentina. All the places like uh, Salta, like Jujuy, like those provinces. So um, when the pandemic arrived uh, here in Bolivia, we lived a really a complicated, complicated quarantine. So um, besides that, the drug policy in that moment was really criminalizing. And as I said before, um, a lot of communities were uh, were unable to commercialize coca leaf. On the other side, um, 
there's a big population of consumers in Argentina that were also waiting for the coca leaf. There in Argentina, in the north of Argentina, you can find uh, you can find this interesting uh, dynamic. Um, people can buy coca leaf inside. People can chew, can use it in natural with natural purposes. So uh, there is no that there is no crime there because they have a natural natural consumption. And um, given this situation of the pandemics and the uh, difficulties to to um, commerce with coca with Argentina, uh, they to uh, propose their own legislation on coca leaf because it's the right. So we basically now have the chance, have the really big opportunity to talk about this um, in multilateral ways, treaties for exporting. It w wouldn't be like the first time that we talk about it. It's happening with cannabis right Mexico, Canada, I mean, uh, we can do this uh, at a very, very diplomatic uh, level, at a level, and it's only a matter of, um, of will, of political will. So, well, we see a lot of perspectives for this market. We see that uh, the times are the right times to do things and move things. Right now, the situation in Bolivia is not is not uh, it's a little bit complicated. Still, the political time is 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 like uh, affecting all of us. But uh, I, I I really believe that we can work this together. I really have faith in that, and I hope I hope it will be like that. Well, that was all. Thank you very much. It, it's nice for me talking with you about these topics. Are uh, really a, a little bit complex, but it's worth it. Okay, thank you so much. I think I'll stop. Sharing. Well, I'll stop sharing in a moment. But um, yeah, so we had some. We had a few questions. I'll ask one from um, Marcus Mars. How is coca leaf traditionally used besides chewing against altitude? altitude sickness. Yeah, um, sorry for the delay. Yeah, uh, traditional, traditional use in Bolivia is very, very, it's complex because it's uh, based on Andean cosmovision, right? So, for example, coca leaf to read the future, uh, you use talk with her in, in some rituals for the Pachamama when you want to feed her when you go to the mountains or, or to your wakas, that are the sacred places where you go and, and, and feed her, um, you can use in, not only in, in like uh, for resistance, <laughs> the complicated life, but also in herbal medicine because uh, researching something really interesting. Interesting, we heard that in some communities in Bolivia, in Los Yungas, uh, all, all tierras bajas, that that those places, people have coronavirus with coca leaf and some others, other plants that contain virus and a lot of people. Uh, virus like like if it wasn't <laughs> so yeah uh, coca leaf is a 
that is completely emerged in our life in every facet of it, in every phase, in every house. Um, and you have several uses. When you are with fever, that's something that I learned like um, you put the coca leaf in, in a glass with alcohol, then you let it like uh, stay there for maybe half an hour and then you then so put it on your on your head and slowly the fever is going to go that kind of uh, we every day and consider it it's like we're not conscious about the uses that we give to this plant It's also interesting to me that you mentioned that cocoa is to oh, there we go. That cocoa is being used to treat um, COVID nineteen and things like that. I mean, how is it is it chewed in that context? And yeah, is it is it made into a tincture? Um, how is it used for COVID? Okay, maybe you can unmute yourself. I'm really sorry, I couldn't hear you because I, I don't know, I have this uh, problem with, I, I guess, with my connection. Write me down the question, please. Hear me now, Patricia? I, I hear you, but I hear you like really, really slow and with a robot voice, <laughs> really weird. <laughs> So I typed the question. Okay, um, do you hear me? If you want, I can all those questions. Thank you very much. Well, of course, the uses go goes beyond the ceremonial uses, as we were saying, like in ordinary life. You take your coca leaf tea for uh, for sleeping or for the stomach. Uh, the kind of things. Um, recently. There are so many uses that you can give to the coca leaf. It's a new market. It's really, really interesting to study. Is the market of uh, coca machuca. That's how it's called. When I explain it. It's like uh, you you take this amount of coca and, and you uh, put it into a plastic uh, some plastic and then you put some coffee and, and bicarbonato and all other substances and then then like start to like with rocks and I don't know that's why it's called machucada that is like a hidden coca golpeada something like that and this is a really new way of consuming coca leaf um, I saw it is very used in Santa Cruz yeah. and well here in La Paz people is, is starting to eat uh, to chew coca leaf in that way so um, there are different dynamics uh, that covers all, all the market of coca leaf uh, is is really really big the potential is big outside as well in Argentina um, in well, as I heard as I study as we know uh, in Europe, a lot of people is starting to use uh, coca leaf powder, right? Benefits it takes to our body. So, yeah, it's, it's nice. Coca tea, yes. For aches or sleeping. 
I'm wondering if you can hear me now. Do you hear me? I hear you, but still like really loud. Okay. Um, if you go, Patricia, to the Q and A section, then you can really go. Excuse me. Um, there are some lovely questions on the right hand side in the Q and A section. Oops. Maybe now. Ah, okay, okay, okay. Cool. Um, thanks for thanks for the for the, the <laughs> for all the space that you gave me you gave me today because it's a, a really nice chat. I saw there was some yeah, and that's cool. So hi. And um and thanks for the question, Jasmine. Yes, uh it says as a Bolivian I would love to learn more about Fundación Acción Semilla. Could you tell its story? Also, how can we Thank you very much. Uh, yeah, Media is a foundation of young people that we study. Um, it has been a little bit complicated because of the political situation here. Um, but we have the right <laughs> and we are in the right places to talk uh, and work with with the uh, best in our country. I mean, uh, cities that we work, all the spaces, political spaces uh, that have opened their arms and their doors to to move all the Kokalif uh, top. Uh, and uh, all the young people that uh, by now <laughs> contributing with um, studying a topic that is really, really polemic. So, yes, uh, we, you can afford, you can be part of the family, like uh, going to our Facebook webpage and giving a like and staying connected to us. We have a YouTube uh, channel as well uh, with a lot of videos, uh, training <laughs> programs, uh, well, a lot of, a lot of a lot of material that you can access just by getting into. Um, yes, and we are on Twitter as well, like always sharing um, our research, our activities, um, our work, basically our work. So yes, we basically the areas that are uh, drug policy issues uh, regarding legal system and uh, the other one, coca leaf, and well, the third one, we we specialize in gender as well. But and all these uh, with young people, right? I think it's a very cool place to to start the dialogue and, and I don't know, work all together. Another one. Mm. I don't know if you have any more questions. Um, I wonder if you can hear me better now with my headphones. That really sounds really, really weird, right? Someone said, like, uh, you sound like dark Vader. That's true. I hear it. Like... <laughs> That's a really good question, Bia. 
underrepresented the plant medicine or psychedelic um because i think well it's because of the stigmatization that goes around the plant and um we talk about our inner levels i guess is because there is no uh political will yet enough like to move it like we how we can really or we could really move or work this topic that that's a really great question um we were working a few with uh, vice presidents here with with some places of vice president in um in a in a series of uh training for young people about uh, democracy policy i mean you know, like a very very more this view, I don't know. And when I started to talk about coca leaf, we were just uh, thinking, where are we going to put this topic on the on the content, <laughs> right? Because um, it gets to be complicated now. And then we decided to put it into the decolonization because it's basically that right so the stigma no, around cool. coca leaf and coca tours uh, goes like <laughs> beyond the uh, those times when our countries our place our region were exposed to all the political colonization uh, right of the west so it basically comes all the laws of cannabis and with all the treaties. Uh, so yes, uh, when we talk about this topic, we are of course talk about the international treaties. We talk about the 1961 convention. We talk about the 1971 convention. But uh, anyways, what I pull on that on this is uh, how our country, besides all the conflict, inner conflict arise all the time political um ideological is like complicated besides that uh, they have they have made a union force to fight against um all the treaties that were against our our main uses vision we're talking about colonialism and we're still fighting, I guess, today because of colonialism as well. Not only uh, the West colonialism, we also have a, a lean inner, inner little space of colonialism inside our country. So uh, it's a constant fighting. That's a question, a nice question. Um, coca leaf in Bolivia, it depends on the region, the Andean region that is all, all the Los Andes and the mountains and Quechua, Aymaras, and Las Tierras Bajas, that is the other side of the country that goes uh, to Paraguay. So it's um, completely different. But in the Andean region, we call it in Almama. That means uh, La Madre Sagrada. That's the name, but we also call it uh, in several other ways. Um, Vice President David Chukwuan commented us uh, in the presentation of, of our last book that uh, in our region, Ecuador, Peru, Bolivia, north of Chile, north of Argentina, um, people used to name 
the sacred things with K. So he told us that uh, basically it was born with a K at the beginning, not a C. It's a sacred plant, it's a sacred name. So yeah, that, that's basically the names that you're going to find here in the Andes uh, zone. Um, as far as I know, in the other side of the country, they also name it coca, but I, I have no, uh, I have no more details about you know, quite a of that part of Bolivia. I, I, I can talk to you about the Andean region because I know it very, very well. So I know our, our cultures, our, our um, rituals, our kind of, we see the world vision it's it's more familiar for me so i can talk about it more more properly cocaine no actually no there is no historic record about con cocaine consuming The Andean cosmovision is very complicated. I know it myself. I mean, I'm trying to understand it every day. I think, <laughs> I think that to get it really well as it should be, I, I, and and I was talking about it with Jasmine the other day that I would love to learn Aymara or Quechua that are my native languages because when you speak these languages, you uh, completely understand a little bit how they think. Well, basically, I can tell you this. Uh, uh, in the Andean zone, we used to think, well, people used to think, used to see the future as the past, uh, the past as the future and the present, like the present. So the Andean people, like I and Quechua, they, they share that kind of, of, of seeing the world. They, they say, if you live your present today, you're making your food, your future, but your future is your past. It's really complex to understand, I, I know. But because everything you takes you to the future. So for them, past is the future. And the, the way they speak is, is also uh, showing that, that way of seeing the world. That's why um, we have still have a lot of racism and a lot of difference here in Bolivia that have uh, increased all these times of uh, effervescence. <laughs> but uh, I can recommend you a book that is beautiful to understand the Andean cosmovision. It's called the, the Mountain and the Condor. I don't remember right now the name of the author, but he was an, um, it has an anthropologic view of. Uh, what the cultures and then cultures in Bolivia are, how how they see the, because we are a, a culture that sees the mountains, just spirits, right? So uh, it's very nice. I'm going to share it. I'm, I'm, I look for it and I'll share it. Cool, that's a cool question. Uh, yeah. Where does the main demand for the coca leaf come from? Yeah, from Argentina. Yeah, that's that's a hundred percent because critical relationship of uh, commercial uh, commercial treaties of coca leaf, and that's why we are trying to. Well, we are moving with uh, some people in the government. This this thing of uh, or talking to Argentina or maybe maybe let's let's initiate something but yeah right now the the times are, are a little bit complicated it's Argentina for sure but uh, there are other countries that also are considering coca um, there is uh, Brazil part of Chile Ecuador uh, well, 
as I've heard, uh, even Peru buys uh, coca leaf from Bolivia because our coca leaf is better. Of course, uh, Peru is like going really, really, really uh, ahead with uh, with its market because they have another way to export, right? And Colombia is also like <laughs> the market has uh, grown up a lot. So I think Bolivia is like staying, staying behind. How do coca leaf come to be stigmatized? Basically for all the for all the ideological that arose on the time, right? Uh, against plants. So yes, they they send a commission to Peru and Bolivia to study. Uh, the commission said what what uh, <laughs> um, what what does the, that uh, ideologically movement said that was proper to say it's always the same it's like um, they are not going to they are not going to find any uh, any proof to um, criminalize something right so um, I guess that beyond the studies that we're talking about uh, that coca leaf was dangerous for health that communities were drug addict that um, people who choose coca leaf were uh, uh, savages or <laughs> that kind of stuff is like um, beyond that uh, in our countries like peru and bolivia were really um, complex interests right on, on the people who always manipulate power. So I think it's the story that is coming over and over and over again. In 1930, it happened in 1970, it's going to happen, still happen. Uh, so you see your, your question is really complicated because I see it like every day, I see it won't change. I see <laughs> we are really far away from those structures that are um, resisting the change in places and sometimes it makes me sad but um, I still have faith <laughs> in our work and in the civil society especially because uh, places like this, talks like this, I mean uh, meetings like this uh, generates and sustain that kind of thinking, the change thinking. Yeah, that, that comment is when buy chocolates with coca Peruvian supermarkets. Yes, that's true. It's integrated, but the difference is that the coca live in Peru and the coca live in Argentina, um, the dynamics are different, right? It's integrated, but in Peru, for example, I don't know if you see uh, people of the high class like chewing coca. No, they're going to see it like, mm, no. And it happens, still happens a little bit here, but not that much because uh, when you go to Tarija, when you go now to Santa Cruz and places, you can find people of the high class chewing coca and not looking at it like a racial issue, right? I, I guess the dynamics in every place different, but that's why it's amazing to study coca leaf because in every place you can find completely different characteristics. Romain and coca, probably behave See, yes. I don't know. It depends. For example, the La Coca Machucada uh, that I was talking before. Um, I don't know if it's completely healthy because they use something like bicarbonato and some other things that, that really are. 
So I know that people use this, for example, use this when they go to a party. And in Bolivia, when you go to a party, you, you party like three days. <laughs> oh, well, the, the community parties. So they use it, yes, to to stay up, to stay, to be wake up, to not sleep, to <laughs> to get dizzy, and <laughs> yes, th this kind of coca machucada uh, is is exactly that. It's like stimulant, very very strong stimulant. But uh, as I was telling you, I don't know if that's completely healthy because people like three days after they are like oh my god completely <laughs> douchebags so um, well, that's that's the phenomenon the phenomenon of the of the market I don't know if coca leaf is more stigmatized than marijuana because in Bolivia, marijuana is really, really stigmatized. We have a really drug policy on marijuana. You can even have a minimum consumption here uh, if you are found on the street with, with seats. <laughs> uh, you can go to jail for almost whatever it takes because uh, we have this problem of the... Of the um, uh, detention... Um, preventive detention so no here in bolivia marijuana is really really stigmatized coca leaf outside the world maybe but that would be something like a very personal appreciation because uh, uh, at least in the circles that we are on uh, coca leaf is not stigmatized um it's even it's even very very <laughs> very liked by a lot of people, so they very want it. But yeah, I think that outside the, the drug policy circle is really complicated to talk about coca leaf. Well, what happened to me once, I guess once, um, when I was going to CND, I don't remember what year, but I was uh, going to Europe from Spain, so when I went to show my, my my ID and that kind of stuff, the guy says to me, oh, you're Bolivian, yes. And he says like, uh, How is your, how's your cocaine there? Do you have some? <laughs> and I like, oh, okay, no, I don't have, but <laughs> you know, that kind of jokes, but yeah, I guess not only cocaine is stigmatized, also Bolivians are stigmatized because of that. Coca International Trade Routes, Coca, Coca Leaf, Coca Leaf, I guess not, cocaine, <laughs> but no, to be honest, no, I haven't. Coca Leaf, I don't think so, because uh, it's kind of impossible to take out Coca Leaf from Bolivia to North America or Europe, and in the region is forbidden, but, but Coca, Cocaine International Trade Routes, no, to be honest, no, I haven't. Yeah, but that that may not be um, Bolivian for sure. That I'm sure that's Peruvian coca leaf because per Peruvians, yes, um, they have a, a really uh, nice. Uh, I don't know if it's nice, but it's uh, pretty much advanced than any other country. They commerce coca leaf to Europe, and they they have a a nice market there. <laughs> no, gracias a ustedes. Um, I was just reading the experience there. It was really cool. <laughs> cool. No, thank you very much. That was a, a really nice talk. Um, Thank you, guys. Thank you, thank you. It was a really nice. Hope to see you soon.